Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for this segment, we have Eric Pullier, founder and CEO of Vadim, to discuss AI, its impact on regulatory issues. It is great to see you as always, Eric. Welcome back to Trade Talks. Thanks, Jill. Good to be here. All right. Of course, AI, it's in everyone's conversation these days. Um, and as a tech pioneer and CEO of a Web3 platform, explain the relationship between AI and Web3 and why it's important. It, it actually is fundamentally important, I think, not only for our business, but for the economy. AI is not just another technology, a fad coming in and out. It's something that's evolved over time and certainly hit the public consciousness right now with a, with a bang, but it's, it's actually going to infuse every aspect of society. And Web3, as the evolution of the internet itself, is going to merge with AI as a fundamentally important thing. So just to, to give you an example, when you look at how AI is being applied to education, healthcare, marketing, government, each of those elements are about connecting to people more effectively. And Web3 technologies do the same, but they do it with digital wallets, with digital objects, with decentralized um, 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 finance. And now these technologies will now come together and make a huge impact. Right, and Eric, of course, regulation is a big part of the conversation. Why is it so consistent that they're taking place in the C-suite, in companies, in boardrooms? What is the current regulatory landscape and why is it necessary for a framework to be put around these types of technologies? Well, let's, let's not forget uh, that there is a lot of regulation already in place. So let's not use that as an excuse to, you know, need to take a wait and see attitude on things where regulation already exists. There are smart guidelines. And we're one of the companies that helps large entities look at those guidelines and make sure that they're compliant. At the same time, AI introduces a completely new set of requirements for regulation. And the more guidelines we can get now, the more innovation we're going to see in the market. It's really important to look at the power of these technologies to affect our daily lives and know that this power has to be looked at carefully to avoid uh, you know, unfortunate consequences. As a virtual world builder and a connector, why should companies care about these technologies and how they can improve relationships with their customers? The most important thing for most companies right now, Jill, is that they are looking to connect to their customers more effectively. Look at the landscape that's just evolved in the last few years where we have had regulation around privacy, right? This is not lacking. It's actually just difficult to comply with because it shifts the model of how things were done in the past. Similarly, Apple has taken a stand against cookies, which is the way that a lot of companies were using to target individuals. So now AI comes into the picture and it's gonna give us a much better way to combine the technologies that we have with Web3 with the personalization of data that we have uh, in the past to create compliant ways to create personalized audience participation and, and connection. So what we have now is a revolution in how organizations are gonna look to collapse advertising, marketing, and loyalty into one and connect to their customers better. Let's talk about Web3 beyond the enterprise. You had brought up how it's being leveraged for educational spaces and um, you've partnered with Genius Group and Stanford to um, accelerate educational spaces this year. How are these technologies impacting learning? It's really going to change learning for forever. Thank you for, for bringing this up because I don't think there's a more important topic right now in, in any of our lives than how the broken educational system can be fixed and needs to be fixed. Uh, right now we have an, an industrial outdated system where it's one size fits all and the type of learning and memorization that goes into these systems spits out a certain type of education, as you might call it, but it's really insufficient for what's, what's needed for where society is going. And what happens now is the ability to use AI and the large language models that have come together for a new type of user interface to connect better and create long lasting memories and experiences that stick, uh, uh, that, that create a, a type of engagement that creates a, a completely different learning paradigm. Let me just give you an example. Uh, right now, when you go out and you take a class, very much is about information that exists that you're trying to absorb and then regurgitate. Where we're shifting with these technologies is imagine becoming the teacher and an AI which understands you and your level of advancement is asking you to teach it. 
And as it gets better, you can then advance and use gamification techniques to move through levels. This is what we're seeing now, which is a complete shift in model that brings these technologies together to create a, a not only a different type of learning, but a different type of skill set training across every aspect of, of what we're seeing education can be. What are your top predictions in, in this space? What should investors be watching for? Well, I think investors really have to understand that this is a, a, a fundamental shift. So if you look at, for instance, Microsoft, Microsoft put $10 billion or so into OpenAI. I think if they had put in a trillion dollars, it would have been a bargain. I mean, look at what's happening right now. They're, in, they're infiltrating all, every, every aspect of, of uh, different sectors. So they're probably subsidizing it to a large degree. So one prediction I'd make is in within three years, you're going to see $100 billion of new non-cannibalistic revenue that Microsoft is going to create just out of their, their ability to leverage open AI into their products. It really is the coup of the century. Now, the next prediction would be that because of that, the backlash of companies that need to now create privacy around their data and not just put everything out into the cloud, they're going to, you're going to see a rise of the open source models and AI-enabled uh, uh, appliances that are going to move into the enterprise and create a whole segment of, of investor opportunity around investing in that as companies look to protect their data and train their own open source models. And then lastly, that's going to converge with Web3. And I think what we're going to see is every company on the planet leveraging these technologies to change the way they, they interact with their internal and external constituencies. Internal means their employees and partners, conferences, uh, uh, HR onboarding, gatherings of all types. And then external is really this notion of gathering first party data in a legal and compliant way and creating better relationships with their customers. All of this comes together for a new generation of loyalty. That's what, I'm, that's what we're going to see in the next 12 months. All right, Eric, appreciate your insight as always. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.